Hi my lovely Frosty fam, it's me Karen Frost here at Nail Decadence and in this video I'm going to be trying out the Incandescent Shine products for the first time. So these are the ones that I'll be using. This roasted chestnut is a gorgeous glitter mix. Oh it's very pretty. That was the inspiration for the set. This is a milky white that I have mixed myself. If you are interested in how I mix my acrylic colours myself, do check out the video in the link in the cards at the top of the screen and you will find a video that I made on how I mix my acrylic colours myself. With the two different systems, um, I mix my acrylic colours when I do them myself, when I do my custom mixes. I use Nao acrylic powders when I do so. Therefore, I will use the Nao monomer to go with it i tend not to mix brands when it comes to monomers and powders because each brand has a recipe to how their molecules cure together and to make sure that the acrylic does cure properly i like to make sure that i use the monomer that goes with the powder so they're brand specific it's not not such a big deal if you are capping in uh, if your clear acrylic matches your monomer because then your thin clear base and your capping layer are both from the same brand so it's less of an issue if you then don't use the monomer that goes with the coloured powder but I just prefer to cover all my bases and make sure I use the monomer that goes with the powders so brand to brand anyway on to the design so i showed you all the bits and bobs that i'll be using got loads of bits and bobs i created the design around the roasted chestnut and it's a gorgeous sort of coppery gold mm, yeah it is it's like a coppery gold glitter mix and it's just really beautiful but i also wanted to use given you know the warmer weather i wanted to use some butterflies and flowers you know those little paper ones that i've got i didn't want to just match up orange ones with it because i do a lot of matchy matchy sets i wanted to just throw in a random color in with it and when i was looking at the orange ones i thought the orange the purple and the white ones would add a nice little accent to the be complementary to the orange if you look on your color wheel orange and purple you know are complementary colors so that's why i chose the purple so that's what i'm going to use just to add a an, you know another color into the mix i think it worked out well but um yeah anyway so on this ring finger i'm doing a full nail of this cover pink it's quite a pale cover pink and it's quite translucent so to get full coverage you do have to build it up quite a bit and as per usual i will just use it for color although you can build the entire nail with a cover pink i will be capping it in clear because that's my preference i like to cap everything in clear and therefore my cover powders and my colored powders last longer but also i like that layer of clear on top it just gives that glass effect that i just i really like to see so that's what i'm going to do so now that i've finished applying that uh cover pink i will cap it in the clear acrylic like i said now workability this is a slower setting system and any of my frosty fam that are usual my you know my regular vid uh, watchers they know i uh i'm used to a fast setting system so this being a slower setting system i do struggle a little bit with it because i'm just not used to it after i've done a few nails i get you know better at it but this is literally the first time i'm trying it these powders i haven't even swatched them i'm just going straight in and applying it to my nails so this is the very first time of uh, giving these a go and as you can see they it, it, i can do it 
I can do it I just struggle a little bit because I'm not used to how slow it sets compared to a fast, uh, fast setting now, I wouldn't say it's really really slow setting it's just slower than what I'm personally used to however that also means it is what's the word advantageous to newbies as well as uh, experienced nail tech so it's it's definitely one one for all 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 types so whether you're new or whether you're experienced i think this system could work for you either way which is which is really cool actually i just have i like my fast settings i've got zero patience so yeah but i got on with this system fine it does work out it's a nice system to work with so I'm just sticking on some of those uh, flowers and butterflies that I was talking about with some of the copper leaf. So all I did was, because this is going to be sort of a milk barfy style nail, I applied just a thin layer of that milky white down first so that there's a bit of a background. Then I'll add all my little bits and bobs that I'm encapsulating. So I'm literally adding everything that I showed. So bit of the iridescent glitter, bit of the roasted chestnut uh, glitter mix, the acrylic, glitter acrylic, um, some of the paper butterflies and flowers and I'm just putting them on with tiny bits of clear acrylic where I need it because obviously the thin layer of the milky white was enough for me to stick some of them into first but as that started to dry then I used a bit of clear acrylic around and then I'm just using small amounts of that milky white over some parts of the um, bits and bobs that I've encapsulated just to give it that sort of milk bath effect and when I'm happy with that that I've sort of given it effect as much as I would like I'm then going to ombre over that with the cover pink um, this cover pink being a bit more translucent really ombres over those pieces really quite nicely but I think if you were using a really dark colour, you would struggle with your ombre a bit. You would really have to make sure that you ombre um, the dark colour, really thinned it out before you put the cover pink over the top. Otherwise, you will definitely get shadowing because it is more on the translucent side and it being a paler um, cover pink. Anyway, so once I've finished that ombre, I will, of course, encapsulate because we want to protect all those pretty bits and bobs. But also, of course, we want to build our strength and structure with the clear. So I'm just going to encapsulate all of those. This is quite a long set, so it's, you know, it's quite a lot of beads needed and quite a lot of acrylic needed to create these nails. So... Given how the size of those pots you'll see, um, well, well you saw from the beginning, the pots are quite small in the sample pot. However, I was able to do all 10 uh, nails using those pots. So yeah, it is definitely enough for a set of nails. And I've got loads of the roasted chestnut left over. Um, I've only got a little bit left of the cover pink and the clear left over so you can definitely get a set of uh, 10 very long nails out of this if they were shorter nails you'd definitely get two sets out of that pot so yeah pretty cool given that they're sample sizes you know you're getting you get a fair amount in those pots which is really nice can't go wrong there if you can get get two sets out of it that's you know obviously they'd have to be shorter nails but definitely if you can get two sets out of it go for it so finished capping that nail and on the index finger I'm going to do a full milk bath nail so I'm going to use that milky white first um, I forgot to mention I have already applied applied the thin clear base before I started recording so that part has already been done obviously i did that after i had prepped the nails and applied the tips so i'll just apply a very thin layer now when i say thin i mean thin this lay layer of milky white needs to be really thin because you when you're encapsulating 
bits and bobs you want to make sure that your layers are thin otherwise you'll end up filing into them and you don't want that but these little paper bits are really very thin so yeah it shouldn't be a problem and you saw if they stick up too much I will just sort of bend them with uh, in between my fingers just sort of give them a little bit of a curve like that and then put them on and then they'll sit a bit nicer on the nail and won't stick up so much so I don't want to file into them so then I'm also going to add on some of the copper leaf of course some of the roasted chestnuts glitter acrylic and some of the um, what do you call it iridescent glitter I think I add some of that on as well after I've finished placing these roasted chestnut pieces on so any little gaps and I am going to put some of the roasted chestnut pieces in and because it's a glitter acrylic the clear's already mixed into it so you just need to use a bit of monomer to pick that up with and then I use just a tiny bit of clear acrylic to pick up some of that iridescent glitter and put that on the nail as well so I've packed, as usual, I pack as much as I can <laughs> onto a nail. <laughs> the more the better. So I will leave that to set up a bit because I don't want those pieces to move when I cap them. Um, but also I need to do the milk barfy bit and I don't want the bits to move when I do that. So on to the little finger and I'm going to do a glitter ombre or an ombre over the glitter kind of thing. Yeah. So at the very free edge I'm adding the copper leaf and then I'm going to put one of those butterflies on and also add some copper leaf. No, yeah, so I'm using the roasted chestnut glitter acrylic should I say, then adding some of the copper leaf and a butterfly and also some of that iridescent glitter and again with that iridescent glitter I'm just using a tiny bit of clear acrylic to pick that up with same on the thumb so it's the roasted chestnut on the tip first get that nice and I'm building I mean because it's a multi mix it's got very fine pieces as well as large bits in it you can get full coverage if you want but I'm not too bothered if there's little gaps but yeah it's pretty full coverage if you look at it and because I'm adding so many bits and bobs it doesn't matter if there's little gaps so a bit more of that iridescent glitter and a butterfly and some of the copper leaf as well because you know me more is more <laughs> do you see what I mean it's like it's a, it's a busy set but it's not too busy you know what I mean anyway so the little finger has had a bit of a chance to set up so I'm going to ombre over some of the cover pink and as you saw just then the cover pink went a little bit far down and the glitter started moving it hadn't quite set up and left so I've left that alone to set up whilst I go back to the index finger and add some of the milky white in various places here and there to give it that milk bath effect so it looks like they're all floating around in a milk bath. Now I don't want to cover them up entirely because I don't want you want to I do want you to be able to see them. But yeah, they do need to look like they're kind of swimming in a bath of milk. So I've gone back to that little finger which has had a bit more chance to set up. So hopefully the gl glitter doesn't uh, move again this time and it doesn't, which is good. So I just did my cuticle bead got that nice and neat went back to the thumb added a bit more of the glitter acrylic on that because I noticed that it was um, I hadn't brought it down as far as I had on the little finger and I want them to match so that's why I did that and you see I'm switching between nails you know I'll do a bit on one nail then I'll switch to another nail that way it gives the acrylic time to set up because it's quite frustrating if when you go to cap the nails or do the ombre if the glitter moves and slides away from where you've put it that can be annoying so that's why I'm giving them a chance to set up and switching between fingers um, it just means that I'm still constantly working and not waiting for things to set up um, yeah but actually given them a chance to set up if that makes sense work smarter not harder 
so you'll notice as I am applying I will point my finger down and that's to help gravity um, control the product so that it doesn't flood back you see point the finger down then the acrylic won't flood back into my cuticle area and then I've got more control in directing where I want it to go so little tip it's uh, one that everyone uses it's not a secret or anything <laughs> but I thought I'd point it out because you never know how much someone knows so you could be a complete newbie watching this video so I will point out little things here and there that you may not be aware of if you point your finger down it's um, less likely that the acrylic can flood back into your cuticle area and cause you problems which you don't want do not let the acrylic touch the skin if it does use your brush to nudge it away because it will cause lifting if you leave it touching the skin so as usual when i'm capping i'm thinking about the strength and structure of the nail I also want to make sure that all of those little bits are totally encapsulated and protected by the clear acrylic and that I've got a good margin to file into knowing that when I file the clear I'm not going to file into those uh, embellishments so I will look at the nail from all different angles and make sure I haven't missed any bits on the side that need acrylic and also make sure that my apex is in the back third and that the nail is as thick as I need it to be and that it matches that ring finger in height and width because I do want all the nails to look similar so if you compare the nails beside each other you will then have a more consistent uniform set back to the thumb and again i'm ombreing so that first bead i just placed where the glitter ended and brought that down ombre it over i didn't want it to go too far down so if you just bring the front of the bead down very carefully and gently sort of swipe it over you'll get your ombre going then you add bead another bead behind that do the same thing bring the front of the bead down and then add another bead by that cuticle area get that nice and neat and then as you can see I'm adding additional beads wherever I think it needs a bit more coverage now do you see what I mean about it being quite um, sheer you can see the glitter right the way through um, so if you uh, you know you're doing an ombre with a, a really dark color you see what I mean you could end up with some really harsh line and shadowing there so that's just something to be aware of with this particular cover pink um, with a glitter ombre you it's you want the glitter to show up underneath um, the cover pink so for this purpose it works perfectly well but like I said if you're trying to go for a seamless ombre using a dark coloured acrylic I would suggest using a more opaque um, cover pink but for, for this purpose of this set it works out just fine and then of course capping the little finger that's had a chance to set up and again encapsulate all those goodies so that I don't file them away. If after you have capped that nail, that glitter is still sparkly and shiny, it means you have not capped it enough. The clear acrylic hasn't encased it. If it's still sparkles and shine, there's not enough clear acrylic. So add some more because the last thing you want to do is file into all of that because it just won't look pretty, especially with metallic glitters. If you file into them, it, it can be fairly noticeable because you'll see like silver instead of the color that they are covered in so yeah try and make sure that you have a good margin to encapsulate with and that you can see that it's all gone dull so that you can't see any sparkle anymore and that way you know you have encapsulated it correctly look at that now from all different angles make sure that you have your strength and structure there the apex doesn't need to be huge it just needs to be enough to withstand the length of the nails and like I said these are 
very long so they need a decent amount of an, uh, height on the apex but it doesn't need to be huge you, you've seen them from the side and I've still got to file them they're not massive and they are perfectly strong I didn't break any nails or anything so yeah I've tested this theory out many times and it does work you don't need a huge apex as long as you've structured that nail correctly so finished capping that and I filed and shaped off camera sorry my frosty filing freaks no filing in this video uh, filing wise this system filed um, nicely wasn't any uh, worse or better than any other system just files like acrylic which is you know what was expected um, so yeah I filed shaped removed all of the dust and now I'm going to add a base coat so that I can use this um, I don't know what it's called chrome powder stuff um, I'll leave I'll try and find it and leave a link for it in my um, Amazon store it's you get them from eBay Aliexpress and Amazon and they come with those little eyeshadow applicators which are you know handy to use and yeah they're just solid powders which um, so they're not so quite so messy as the loose powders so I'll just use I'll cure that for 60 seconds the base coat that is you need a tacky layer for this one it doesn't um, I tried it out on a tack free top coat and it doesn't rub in so this one definitely needs because some powders you need a tack free top coat to rub them into this particular one it it needs a base coat it needs the tacky layer so I will add that on rub it in then use the other side of that um, eyeshadow applicator to remove any of the excess then I will float some base coat over the top of that to seal it in but also give my top coat something to stick to rather than doing two top coat layers I prefer to do a base coat layer so that I know my top coat is going to stick so I try and float that over cure that in the lamp do remember to wipe off your brush before you put it back in the bottle because it is likely to have little glitter particles on it and you don't want to contaminate the rest of your base coat so yeah wipe your brush off before you put it back in the bottle and then it should be fine so now it's time to top it off and keep it tough and bring those beautiful glitters to life and there we go look at that glitter isn't it stunning so final thoughts on incandescent shine i like it i like it it's the first time i've tried it it is a slower setting system so it takes a little bit of me getting used to it but i actually really enjoyed it it wore really well um if you want to see how it wore if you look at my madam glam video you'll see that i um gel polish over that and infill, infill it and gel polish over it it wore perfectly fine it didn't lift or, uh, badly or anything tiniest amount of lifting so yeah um incandescent shine you are frosty approved boof there's your stamp <laughs> i mean it wasn't a full review for incandescent shine i just thought i'd share my first um thoughts and and feelings about the products but yeah so i'll leave a link in the description box to incandescent shines products if anyone is interested and as we have finished top coating we are at the end of the video so i'd like to take this opportunity to say thank you ever so much for coming to my channel watching this video spending some of your most precious time with me thank you i appreciate you ever so much if you have not done so already please go ahead and click that subscribe button join the frosty fam we'd love to have you they're a good bunch and if you feel up to it you are more than welcome to leave me a comment and this is the finished set i hope you've enjoyed this one i hope you like the set of nails as much as i did i really enjoyed wearing these ones i thought they were very pretty and yeah that's all i've got for this time peeps so you take care now and i will speak to you all again very very soon Bye for now.
gonna make 